Well, it's been a while since I've had a reason to wear my Calgary Roughnecks jersey. But in this video, let's talk some Calgary Roughnecks news. As in this video, we'll obviously recap the 2020 NL Entry Draft. As well, afterwards, we'll talk and get you caught up on some off-season news with player movement, coach movement, and some NLL news. That One thing we know for sure is Dallas Fort Worth will be joining the NLL in 2022, and there sounds like that the season might start in January, a little later, given what's been going on, but the entry draft happens at this time of year under normal circumstances. So I'll bring up my notes here, and let's take a look at who the Calgary Roughnecks have drafted in the 2020 NLL entry draft, and they definitely also made a splash in said draft as a no draft is complete without a trade and actually Calgary wound up picking up nine players in this draft as they picked up a few draft picks as well over shortly in the draft for 2020. So they had the first pick in the round one was the fifth overall pick and that is forward Tanner Cook and is born in 1988. And he played for the Whitby Warriors from the, I think, OLA, which I'm assuming is the Ontario Lacrosse Association. So with the fifth overall pick, the Calgary Rough next pick, Tanner Cook. And then the splash happened as the Calgary Rough next. They made a draft day trade. As they traded away, we're going to miss Tyson Bell as we ship them off to Halifax, to the Halifax Thunderbirds. In exchange, the Calgary Roughnecks picked up the 14th and 20th overall in this draft. So Calgary helped themselves to a couple more draft picks in the entry draft. So for the first round, 14th overall, now that we got from the Tyson Bell trade, Calgary picked Harrison Masoka, if I said it right, a transition player. Actually, he is from Calgary. He was born in 1998. 1998 as he played for the Stony Brook Seawolves in the RMLL. Not quite sure exactly what that stands for, but uh, we made a trade to pick a local player. And then the other pick that the Carrier Roughnecks picked up from Halifax in the Tyson Bell trade, which is the 20th overall pick, we selected Ethan Treeshalt. Treeshurt. Treeshurt, uh, if I said the name right. He's also another transition, born in 1998. He played for the Coquitlam Advances from the BC Lacrosse Association over in British Columbia. And then actually Calgary had their own 21st overall pick right after picking up those two picks in the Tyson Bell trade as they drafted Patrick Dodds. At least that name was a little easier for me to say. Ford born in 2001. He played for the event to Victoria Shamrocks from the BC LA which is, I think, it stands for the British Columbia Cross Association. And then the Calgary did get a compensatory pick to round up the second round. So they had four picks in the second round. So every second overall, the Calgary Roughnecks picked up another goalie in Justin Getty, from, born in 2001. He played at the Nanaimo Timberman, so another player that we picked up in the BC Cross Association. And then the third round pick, they picked up 37th overall pick, which in that pick, they traded away their downs to the New York Riptide for this pick. And what they used that pick on for the 37th overall is we drafted defenseman Reese Blake, born in 1999, also played at the BC LA. At this time, he came from the Port Quicklam, Port Quicklam Saints. So that is the round pick. I'll have all the picks in the description below so you can see where all the picks came from and know more about the players. So round four, which was the 63rd overall pick, the Calgary Roughnecks drafted Brody McLean, the forward, from 1998 born. He played for the Townsend Tigers in the NCAA, so we picked up a player, plays lacrosse in the U.S. And then the round five, 72nd overall, the Calgary Roughnecks also went to the NCAA again for this player, and Jackson Morrow forward, 
1997 born. He played for the Denver Pioneers. And then, early note, the Hall Draft Hall for the nine players that the Calgary Roughnecks drafted in round number six. The seventh overall, another player I don't know that is from Calgary, is Lazio Henning, the forward, born 1997. He played at the Burnaby Lakers in the Western Lacrosse League, I assume. So welcome to the Calgary Roughnecks, to the nine players that recently got drafted in the 2020 NL Interdraft. And thanks for uh, services, Tyson Bell and Derek Downs, for your contributions to the Calgary Roughnecks. Well, Derek Downs was a player that we acquired last season, but Tyson Bell has been one of the fixtures on the Calgary Roughnecks for the last five years. So good luck, Tyson Bell, with the Halifax Thunderbirds. Mine is playing Calgary, obviously. And Derek Downs for your short time with the Kerry Roughnecks with the New York Riptide. So that is the draft recap portion of this video. But let's also get caught up with uh, some off-season news. As you know, it's one of those growing leagues that you don't know much about player. You don't see as much with free frenzy. Not enough for me to cover and make a video. I mean, it's easy, obviously, for the NHL. I mean, most people watch my NHL content and obviously it's one of the mainstream and then same with the CFL I, it's easier to find information however I had to find both with the NOL website and actually on the Facebook page for Calgary Roughnecks to get all the news and stories on players that are returning and also players that are moving on as uh, as what's happened with Free Agent Frenzy as the NOL free agent period started at the end of July in 2020 this draft and free agent frenzy for the NLL has still been under the normal dates and calendar despite what's been going on. Obviously, we did not finish the 2020 season due to you know, the COVID and also the playoffs did not happen. So you could say by default the Calgary Roughnecks were still the faint chance, but we probably would enough had a chance to even defend the title to make the playoffs. So free agent frenzy, who's returning for the Calgary Roughnecks? Well, Dan Taylor, Zach Haywires. Marshall King, Nick Scott, and Tyson Kirkness, as well as Tyler Burton, they all each signed a one-year agreement. That's what they call a one-year agreement. While Nate Wade, which is a player that we acquired from the Philadelphia Wings, that we acquired the, with the 87th overall pick from the Philadelphia for the 5th overall pick in the 2020 draft, which eventually we used that pick on Lozano Henning. So Nate Wade and Mitch Wild both signed a two-year agreement. So those are who are all returning to the Calgary Roughnecks when it comes to uh, who's coming back in Free Agent Frenzy. However, we have to say goodbye to a few players, especially one special player who is known, will be forever known in Calgary Roughnecks history for one particular goal. So first, who's moving on? Well, Sean Tyrell. He signed a one-year agreement with the Georgia Swarm, and Georgia is based out of Duluth, just outside of Atlanta. And then the New York Riptide, well, when we traded Derek Downs to the New York Riptide for that third round pick, he ultimately signed a one-year agreement with the New York Riptide. Actually, I believe last season we originally acquired him from New York, so he's kind of going back home, I believe. Not mis I'll have to look back. And then San Diego Seals signed two of our own. Reese Dutch, well, he's definitely always going to be forever known as Clutch Dutch. For scoring that overtime winner when we won the third championship in AL history and definitely was going to be in the stands for that game and Greg Harnett. So we got two players going to San Diego. I'm sure we'll, we'll miss them here in Calgary. However, I'm sure they won't miss the winters as I'm sure the winters in San Diego was a little nicer than the winters that we get here in Calgary. So that's the free agent frenzy. Who's going, who's staying, who's returning. And who's moving on whenever the 2021 season is going to start. And it sounds like it might get delayed till January. And what it's also to be, I mean, to be seen is, will set fans like me be allowed to go to the game? That's why I have not committed to tickets for next season. And I'm actually maybe honestly leaning towards probably taking the season off. I'll still recap games with my Cagher Roughnecks this month for season three, whenever the season is. I just don't think I might be going to any games, I'm waiting for, you know, things to hopefully 
we'll also get back to normal because even if, let's say, fans are allowed to the game, it's it just wouldn't be the same experience. And I'm talking about more than just beyond, let's say, wearing a mask, but being socially distant and only have so many fans. But there's still a lot to be remaining seen. But uh, I have not committed to buying tickets yet for the 2021 season. Obviously, I would like to go back, come back. But there's a lot of external factors at play as well. And same with the 2021 season with the Calgary Stampeders, but that's still further down. Better to make that decision. So we got some coaching staff news as well. As Kirk Malosky, the head coach of the Calgary Roughnecks, and actually he used to play for the Calgary Roughnecks, and Bob McMahon. If you're familiar with the Calgary Roughnecks, Bob McMahon definitely looks like a mad scientist on the bench as he has that white, gray, puffy hair. Well, that aside... Both Kirk Mosky and Bob McMahon have re signed multi year extensions, so great to have those coaches back. I'd say, I mean, I read the uh, comments on uh, Calgary Roughnecks, and some fans seem to don't like uh, Kirk Mosky or seem to criticize him. I think he's done a great job. He's been here for many seasons and was the coach that led the Roughnecks to their first championship in 10 years back in 2019. But there is some other coaching movement. As Brian Vassell, he actually was an Eastern scout. He will be joining Bob McMahon and Kurt Molesky as an assistant coach because Rob Williams, he has stepped down as assistant coach, but he will remain in the club as a scout. So uh, there's some coaching news and some shuffling with some scouts and coaches. And then the last part is, well, I already touched upon that Fort Worth will be joining the NOL, who would be the 14th franchise but they won't be joining the NLL for the 2022 season. We don't know yet what they're going to call themselves, but that remains to be seen. So I guess uh, next year, next summer, after the 2021 season, whenever we get that in the books, if it actually gets put in the books, I guess we'll have another expansion draft to talk about as the last couple of years, especially when I've been more active on YouTube, They've been having to recap and speculate on expansion drafts to find out who is staying and who's going. So that's something to keep in mind after next season. So that's all I have for Calgary Rough next news. Just to recap the 2020 NLL draft and also some free agent frenzy to get caught up with the offseason. As it's definitely for obvious reasons. It has been a much, much longer offseason as Calgary was only able to get 10 out of their 18 games in the 2020 season before, you know, everything started to get shut down with all you know, the COVID restrictions and figured it wasn't practical to get games in. And then they were still holding out on maybe salvaging some of the playoffs. And then they understand that was not going to be practical. But the other thing with the NOL is that they're a lot like the smaller leagues, let's say the CFL and junior hockey when it comes to, let's say, the Calgary Hitmen. Or the American Hockey League, let's say if you're a Calgary sports fan in the Stockton Heat, well, the NLL is definitely also still more, more reliant on fans going to the game to make a bigger chunk of their revenue. I mean, right now with the NHL, as here we are in the third week of September, we're finally getting into the Stanley Cup Finals with the Dallas Stars and the Tampa Bay Lightning. They can afford to play with no fans, and then same with the NBA and Sadly, the Toronto Raptors uh, must be a Boston thing in Toronto in Game 7 that uh, the Raptors could not uh, finish out the Celtics in Game 7, but they were down two games to nothing. But the Miami Heat is definitely sweeping the floor of them now. But the NBA has also been playing without fans. And then the NFL, in some markets, they have allowed some fans in, but it's not a full stadium. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how the NFL, but I think they're probably going to be watching the how the... NHL and the NBA will approach next season as uh, many franchises share arenas with potentially an NBA and an NHL franchise, in their case locally here, the Calgary Flames and Calgary Edmonton share the south one with the Calgary Roughnecks. So, uh, as I say, what do you think of all the Calgary Roughnecks news? Who's staying, who's going, and who we draft? So, anyway, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, Home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders. You know what you need to do. Just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe. Obviously, I talk mostly Calgary sports on my YouTube channel, but I also do have personal vlogs at Tempta Comedy. And also, let's say I do share my experience with them on the road or at a sporting event. 
let's say for example going into last season when we won the championship we raised that banner to the uh, saddle and rafters and I guess you could say by default the fact that we could not finish the 2020 NLL season that we are still defending NL Cup champs but I'd rather had it we still had another kick in the can at it and win it again but uh, it is what it is and you know that's all I have on my YouTube channel so if that all sounds like be interesting to watch to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey you know what you need to do I also have my other social media links down in the description below for other ways you can follow me and maybe get some uh, updates on what I plan to do on my channel or any you know upcoming content that I plan to do let's say for example my remember the Calgary series where I've started looking at Calgary sports teams from the past so uh, just make sure you like subscribe and check out my other social media links down in the description below and I will put the uh, whole story in the description below as I definitely didn't hear any of these names ahead of time so it's hard to sometimes pronounce players names but welcome to the Calgary Roughnecks out of the way and Welcome to the Rough House, and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get to actually have some games in the Rough House this year. We'll see. But I'll just say, go next, go. Rough next, and I'll see you in the next video.